Welcome to another episode of WTF Cinema. Hi everyone, welcome back to WTF Cinema. Glad you came back. Today, we're diving back into my treasure trove of forgotten drive-in DVDs. No, we're not watching They Saved Hitler's Brain. Despite the glorious title, that film is ridiculously dull. Instead, we are watching a film simply called Pickup. We open, as all great movies do, on a giant belt buckle and a man unbuttoning his pants so he can take a leak. This is our main character. We are already off to a classy start. Luckily, the place he stopped to pee just so happened to have two girls nearby hiding in the tall grass looking for a ride. Now, since the movie has decided not to be too clear on what their names are, I have decided to dub them Cute Girl and Spooky Girl. So Cute Girl and Spooky Girl were waiting for a ride. And when you're waiting for a ride, the best thing to do is to go back a couple of feet from the highway and sit down in some tall grass so that nobody from the road can see you. Because remember, when it comes to hitchhiking, visibility is the enemy. So even though Spooky Girl says that it's bad mojo to go with him because he's an Aries, the girls decide to go with him. Way to trust your instincts, Spooky Girl. I'm sure that won't come back to bite you in the ass. While driving down the road, they are taunted by a couple of rednecks in a pickup truck. Now, cute girl responds to this the only way you can respond to a bunch of hootin' hollerin' rednecks in a pickup. She does a strip tease for them, which goes on for a long time. After that pointless bit of fan service, Chuck gets a call from his boss on the car phone. Turns out he's supposed to deliver that RV to a customer by nightfall. And he's running late. Oh no! While all that is going on, Spooky Girl's in the back playing with her tarot cards, which for some reason give her little 10 second flashbacks. Now a really bad storm moves in, or so we're told. Uh, it, the radio tells us it's a really bad storm. It looks like a nice little sprinkly shower to me, but who am I to question the almighty radio? The storm is so bad, it forces them to shut down the highway, and the RV has to take a detour on some beat-up dirt back roads, which I'm sure are completely safe during the storm of the century. I would prefer to drive on dirt when it's pouring down rain rather than asphalt. Thank you very much. The next day... Yes, an entire day later, the RV gets trapped in the swamp. Finally, we can get some plot going now. Something exciting can happen in the swamp. No, no, this movie's not going to be near that exciting. Yeah, that's more our speed. The movie also takes the opportunity here to try and pierce your eardrums. Because this is what it would sound like if you were in a swamp. Doesn't this sound authentically swampy? Isn't this what you picture when you imagine walking through a swamp? It sounds like this? While Chuck and Cute Girl are walking through the swamp, Spooky Girl has a vision in which she is named the next priestess of Apollo. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't really help you with this one. I mean, either Spooky Girl is like some long-lost descendant of a magical tribe, which is way more interesting than this movie deserves, or she's just nuts. She begins naked and lays down on a slab set in the middle of a swamp. I don't know why the slab is in the middle of the swamp, but okay. The entire time she's topless is actually intercut with flashes of a Catholic church, even though she's now a priestess of Apollo. The only conclusion I can draw is that the filmmakers didn't want anybody in the audience touching themselves inappropriately while this scene was going on at the drive-in, because nothing will kill an erection faster than a dead guy on a cross. Chuck and Cute Girl realize that it's the 60s, and they've known each other for almost an entire day, and they haven't had sex yet. So they fix that. 
just a little bit later, Chuck gets a call from his boss, and he explains to his boss that he's stuck, lost in the swamp. So the phone works. So why didn't he call his boss to be like, hey, I'm stuck, or call AAA and be like, get me out of here. Although, he is stuck in the swamp in an RV with two attractive women. It is the 60s. I believe he's required by law to have a threesome before he's allowed to try and get help. I need an RV. So we now get flashbacks into the past of the two girls. This movie loves flashbacks, but it prefers them if they're short and nonsensical. Now in this case, we get a tiny bit of storyline. We find out that Spooky Girl was seduced by a Catholic priest. And Cute Girl seduced a boy. I'm not really sure what the point of these flashbacks is supposed to be. They don't actually explain to us how the characters came to be where they are, who they are. All they do is show us that, in the past, these girls have sex. Now, are we supposed to draw from this that sex is evil? Maybe we're supposed to draw from this that men are evil. I got it. We're supposed to learn... Penis is evil. Yeah, that's probably the point. So the next day, Chuck and Cute Girl go back off to fornicate in the woods, leaving Spooky Girl alone in the RV, where she's visited by a random campaigning politician. They're stuck in the middle of the swamp, and a politician wanders by to try and campaign to her for about 30 seconds, and then he leaves and is never mentioned or heard from again. What the fuck? I mean, I I should applaud this film, because so few movies have the, the courage it takes to include a random politician scene. Really, this is truly... something. Okay, this next scene may be one of my favorites in the entire movie, and I can't show you the whole thing because it's long, but uh, I'm showing you bits here. It has nothing to do with the movie. It, it, it is a completely out of context scene within this movie. But I like it because I can so easily picture this scene being in other movies. Like any time there was a scene in somebody's house and a TV was on in the background with the sound off, this is what you'd be seeing. Uh, and in fact, the next time I make a movie, I'm going to have this scene inserted into the background somehow. It is just so random. So bizarre, and I'm, I'm going to show you the end of it here. Yeah. yeah, no explanation for it whatsoever. Before, after, during, nothing. It may be the most what the f moment WTF Cinema has ever been forced to endure. Thank you for watching WTF Cinema. Until next time, what the f*** man.